Next, we've got a very special guest, all the way from York, Helen Bear. She's been writing poetry for 35 years. She's currently being mentored by the BBC. She's also a visual artist and a chocoholic. <laughs> and apparently, she's just found out she has family connections in Hull. And this is her first time at Hull Truck Theatre, so give her a big warm welcome. <laughs> Thanks so much, Joe. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, as Joe said, I've just come across from Hull and delighted to be here. Never been here before. Disgraceful of me. Um, the first poem I'm going to do for you is called If Poets Were Shops. And this um, is because of some mad musings that I did one day, uh, thinking, well, what if all these poets, Mr. Larkin included, what if they were high street shops? Who would they all be? I wonder. <laughs> Bit cheeky, this one. There we go. If poets were shops, well, who would they all be? Here's my guess. Coolridge, where he'd be boots, no question. Drugs, drugs, and just a few more drugs. <laughs> Wordsworth, where he'd be woes, with just the suggestion of cheap lipstick about him. <laughs> One's always rather wondered about Wordsworth. <laughs> Lord Byron would be Harrods, of course, swanning about. Riding up and down in the lift, signing autographs, saying Byron was here. <laughs> and here. The Brontes would be MFI. There's more to them than meets the eye. Simple, humble, clergy set. Time travellers. All of them. That's my bet. And Robbie Burns, why well, he'd be the Edinburgh woollen mill. A fee ballad with them the Argyle sweater. And he'd pinch all the assistant's buns. And he'd wish he could go home to some cross-dressing chums. <laughs> Ted Hughes, why he'd be the body shop. He'd be a dark magician selling new body parts. And there'd be a dead fox lying in window, clutching another poet's heart. <laughs> and Will Shakespeare, well he'd be new look. And there'd be Dublin scattered all over the floor. And there'd be kids chucking oranges and raising hell. And all of them knowing that even ghosts and stories are left to tell. And then we come to Philip Larkin. Well, he'd be the second-hand book and record exchange shop. And Miles Davis would be playing in the background. And a man would close up early and simply adjust his bike clips and smile mysteriously. And in his bike pannier there would be two pork chops and a mysterious-looking rabbit's foot. <laughs> With no explanation. Dylan Thomas, well he'd be the goth shop. He'd be wild and smashed and he'd be all in black with a vampire smile and he'd be looking to get trashed. Well, let's face it, he'd be always getting trashed. Now Emily Dickinson, well she would be the same, the blue whale charity shop. Well she'd be quiet as a grave down the back street, she'd be dressed all in white. There'd be a little door with no bell and an assistant with no face. And there'd be a sound of the till moving like a Chinese whisper. And Keats, so oh young Keats, he'd be being cute. And he'd be stood there like bubbles in that picture, confused by the different sizes of dowling and socket sets. <laughs> and he'd be breathing in the paint and varnish and be looking puzzled. It'd be like a little lad in Lost and Found. And please, could somebody ring Keats' man? <laughs> But the one that gets me, Ezra Pound, the Pound Shop. <laughs> More facelifts than Michael Jackson. <laughs> He'd be rap dancing his way in, making out it's all for free, life and even poetry. What a tart, Ezra bloody Pound. What's the catch, Ezra? You don't fool me. You cannot get a canteen of cutlery in the shape of a corgi's arse as used by the Queen for 40 bloody <laughs> Thank you, very hey, reverend, sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, Mr Larkin's ex a sort of obsession, I guess, was uh, one of them was uh, jazz, and mine is cinema. And this is dedicated to uh, all those films that you've ever seen where you've wanted to be the person in that film because it'll all be alright if you are. The woman in the film, 
Well, the woman in the film is the one I want to be. The one who walks down the golden staircase and into the purple and pink sky and the arms of happiness. I want to be the one who inherits the dog who can pick the winning race course, who can crack the Da Vinci Code, the one who invents the vaccine that makes people realise that being human could be what it's cracked up to be. I want to be the woman who knows where the orphan needs to go to find the key that leads to the door that will set him free from the attic and the cellar and the dungeon and the walled in tomb. I want to be that woman, just imagine. I want to be the woman whose car's a time machine and whose house can really fly. The one whose figure and hair are perfect and who is therefore the happiest of women. I want to be the woman who gets to be fallen in love with by all the really decent rogues, who are good guys by the time they kiss in the sequel and they admit that they bought the air balloon and the pet raccoon for you anyway. I want to be the woman whose father started a religion for crazy people, then it turns out they're the only sane ones left on the planet. I want to be the woman who swallowed the microchip with all the stars and dresses on, I want to be the woman who, just by breathing, running into the arms of the universe and shouting, Hey honey, I'm home. I want to be the woman who makes a difference. Thank you, thank you very much. And um, I suppose in a, in a bit of a, a naughty sort of alternative to, I, mean, I know a lot of people say Larkin, Glum. I, I don't think he was really deep down, but you know, it, sometimes the stuff can come across like that. So this is uh, maybe an antidote to glumness, I hope. Um, and as Joe said, just found out I've got some family connections in Hull, which I'm really delighted about. Because although this poem says, um, it starts off with the line, do not count the days, but rather live them. And I think that's what people in Hull do. So, it's to you. Yeah. Do not count the days, but rather live them. Live them as if your next breath were a shipwreck, as if your next heartbeat were the centre of a storm. See that the pot of dreams does not stand empty and mend all your walls within your different cells. Go everywhere, do everything. Show a little kindness even to yourself and do it by Wednesday. And play always a green piano in your mind. Play it as if your life depends on it, which... By the way, it does. Set the table and eat there with someone you love. Do not collect time or lost horizons in a matchbox. If you come to a dead end, laugh and walk on. Endure until all that which is hope that once filled your heart returns to you and the world starts over. Eat midnight between two pieces of bread. And if your cat won't sing, don't make it. Laughter and tears are both with you for a reason. Use them as doorways, use them as windows, and play always that green piano in your mind. Play it as if your life depends on it. Did I mention? It does. Let no one send you trouble in their dreams. Learn what you can from stars and sun and moon. Know that winter is a friend as much as spring. So play always the green piano in your mind. If there are only five questions in the world, never learn the answers. Do not forget to ask the moon and always on a Monday, fall in love. Keep in your soul the colour of a wolf's eye and the dimpled glass of day. Never be late for eternity and do not count the days. But live them, breathe them, swallow them wild and whole. And finally, free as air in your heart and in your soul. Play always that green piano in your mind. Play it as if your life depends on it. Which, by the way, it does. Thank you, Thank you very much. Cheers. Good